Listen. What are you gonna do? I'll give you something. You know, it's kind of crazy to think that comic fans went from being wallflowers to being marveled all around the world. Meanwhile, Potterheads are now feeling petrified totalis because this was a series that was meant to go five and now they might be pulling a divergent. I still think they dropped the ball by not creating a Fantastic Beasts Go app that would have gotten people hyped. Like they could have had a theme park extension that was like Animal Kingdom meets their Magic Kingdom. And they're supposed to have schools all over the world, which means endless spinoffs. And even this new one was originally meant to take place in Brazil. I think you'll find the best visiting school in the world is Hogwarts. Hogwash. And now, you got some fans wishing the books wrote themselves. So for those who are done but are like still kind of curious, I've been catching them all so you don't have to. And even if you've been keeping up, like we have previous LMEs, but it's also been four years since the last one. So chances are you probably obliviated them from your mind. So let me explain. Now, previously on the Fantastic Beasts, we met Newt, who's trying to write his field guide by entering America with all the beasts that he smuggled. And that's where he meets Jacob in the first act, a baker trying to get a loan, who then becomes a muggle, joining them in the struggle. Tina's a wizard cop trying to get reinstated, while her sister Queenie's just trying to get dated. And then there's Percival, who puts them all in grave danger. He's meeting with an orphan named Credence, whose guardians don't believe in reading Harry Potter books. And he's trying to find this dark force known as an Obscurus, without anyone realizing that he actually wants to weaponize it. Meanwhile, Newt just spends the second act ugly dancing to get the beast back into a zoo inside a suitcase. Lucky for him, he has good warriors. Of course I fought in a war, everyone fought in a war. You didn't fight in a war? I work mostly with dragons. Ukrainian iron buddies. Because of all the fantastic chaos that the beasts unleash, they end up bringing Newt into the magic court as they blame one of his beasts for murder. It's a briefcase though, they escape, and then they go meet these magical mobsters and speakeasies. They raid a Macy's, destroy Central Park, all while Newt argues with his piece of lettuce. This is all just some big nightmare, right? For both of us, Mr. Kowalski. In the third act, Grave speaks about the Deathly Hollows, which never get mentioned again for like the next three movies, but he uses it to make a pact and realizes we need to talk about Credence, who turns out to be the Obscure. He unleashes havoc across New York City as a major fight breaks out until the Wand Association comes in and takes Credence down only to reveal that Graves is actually Johnny Depp, playing a dude named Grindelwald. So in retrospect, we've had Colin Farrell as Grindelwald in the first, Johnny as Grindelwald in the second, and then by the third, they go mods. So I honestly wasn't expecting to see so many people transitioning on JK's turf. Magically, every human forgets the events of the movie, nobody dies, and they all live to see a sequel. Well, my philosophy is that worrying means you suffer twice. Three months later, Newt has a bestseller, and after the success of the first movie, now the Ministry of Magic wants him in. Pretty much, they need him in order to fight Grindelwald, who's made a fast and furious escape. I don't do so. Newt then meets with Dumbledore, who, look, this man manipulates people just as much as Grindel. I cannot move against Grindelwald. It has to be you. I guess, you know, that's why they were love. Sorry, I think they said. Mutual respect of one another's abilities. Love is in the air for everyone though, even the assistants. Perhaps you should take off your shirt. Bunty was ready to lay it down. Jacob and Queenie reunite, cause- The potion only erases bad memories. I didn't have any. She has him in a love spell, which means she stole his heart in the first then literally stole his heart in the second, but they end up splitting. Meanwhile, Tina also dips because she only read a headline and not the whole article about Newt's old classmate, Lita Lestrange, getting engaged, which honestly is a simple mistake considering the reality is his brother TC is butted in and proposed to her. Grindel's in Paris killing babies and is turning guys left and right to join him while the Magic Council pulls up on Dumbledore with receipts of their relationship. Turns out they were uncharmed, he was bewitched. Oh, we were closer than brothers. But because of their blood pact, they can't think of hurting each other. They have to get other people to do it over five movies. Newt and Tina get back together as he stares into her salamander eyes and then does his goofy little dance because it's in the second act. Jacob meets Jared Leto, the alchemist, and we meet Lolly as a cameo, all while Credence is still trying to figure out his prequel. Lita proceeds to give the recap of how he was swapped out as a baby and how crazy that whole backstory is but still doesn't really give him answers. And that's when we get the third act, where Grindelwald speaks, as he holds a convention to make magic great again and indoctrinates more purebloods in order to fight the humans. I, I just thought maybe we could hear him first, you know? Just, just listen, that's all. Pledge to me, your eternal allegiance will die. Everyone loses their partner, Jacob loses Queenie, Theseus Lita, Nagini Credence, JK the plot, as it ends on a literal cliffhanger with Grindel revealing to Credence that he is himself a Dumbledore. Your brother seeks to destroy you. 
Now, I want to give a quick shout out to the video sponsor for this one because there's no better way to get through these movies than without having your spirits high. So big shout out to our video sponsor, Bright Cellars, for giving you your own personalized box of wine so that you can sip while you watch this movie or you know, enjoy it now that you're done with your taxes. Right? Now, I've always been a beer guy, so I really appreciate this little personalized quiz that they have for you as soon as you get on the site. It helps pair you with wines that actually fit your taste preferences. They even have these cool little cards that give you an LME on each wine, so you know you know how to serve it, where it comes from, what to pair it with. And I decided to try a nice little variety. You know, I wanted to push my palate, so I got a couple of wines that I ended up really enjoying and got me through these rewatches. And then the ones I didn't, they actually have you with a customer satisfaction replacement bottle for your next box. They do a great job at working with sustainable brands that have plastic free packaging they source wines from a worldwide amount of vineyards with new exclusives all the time and even offer up low alcohol wines and sparkling if that's your thing so if you're interested click the link in the description to take your wine quiz and get a limited time offer of 50 percent off your first six picks with the new game of thrones right around the corner there's no better way to find a new red and help support the channel at the same time but now back to the show So after Johnny was steering the ship in the last movie, poor man ended up in a worse court case than Grindel's, and they left him in the depths of unemployment. I know the Johnny fans were really upset and were ready to start a riot, all while WB was trying to clean up everything and cast a Reparo, but this time a lot has changed for what's supposed to be the middle arc of a grand story. It begins with Dumbledore having this new ability of being able to create a hold, which is like an alternate reality where he can meet with people. I know we've seen Stranger Things in this series, but this upside down world really caught me off guard because you'd think he'd use this in the original series. He summons Grindel through a teacup as the series finally reveals his big secret about who he loves but depending on where you're at it'll probably still be a secret because i was in love with you that said the series has been loaded with these metaphors we want only freedom freedom to be ourselves young wizards and witches sometimes try to suppress their magic to avoid persecution towards a world where we wizards were free to live openly to love freely i know that you have rather backwards laws about relations with non-magic people that you're not meant to befriend them, that you can't marry them, which seems mildly absurd to me. Who's gonna marry him? Now, I personally think Jude Law has been a decent Albus. He does this really good job with that, like, conniving twinkle that's in his stare. Uh, Mods is always great. The problem is, I just don't buy them being together. It's almost like they were in love with a completely different person and then they were just swapped out. It also doesn't help that Mickelson was given two days to make the decision if he wanted to come on. He didn't even get to meet JK. So as an actor, this is a man who has no idea why his character even hates the humans the way he does. Like he had to come up with his own backstory. With or without you, I'll burn down their world. We then meet up with Newt, who continues to lose his briefcase more than I do monetization, but he's there giving birth to a new special beast that plays a big part in the story, because for the first time in this series, I can actually say the beasts were pretty fantastic. That's why Grindel sends out Credence to catch them all in order for them to change the world, as he continues to abuse more animals and Darla, and keeps being jealous of Newt. What makes Albus Dumbledore so fond of you? Well, there are no strange creatures, only, only blinkered, blinkered people. people. We then meet the Dumble Bros. Albus and Alberforth are running a bar. One of them says, hey, what's that writing on the mirror? The other responds, don't ask, don't tell. No, so we're here to see Albus Dumbledore. That would be my brother. They're not the only siblings with a terrible relationship, though. You have Newt and Theseus who continue to bicker more than Cain and Abel. But Theseus, like, this man legit just lost his fiance, and he's chilling like that new beast in the movie. Dumble manip pitches to Theseus that he wants to help break his blood pack necklace. He's manipulative. That's what yeah. I like, and I love that, but it yeah, was so yeah, yeah. gently done. But he's sort of nudging people into, he's like he's three beats ahead yeah. and knows where he wants to get someone. So it's suggesting so that they think it's their idea and then they real, or Newt's smart enough to realize, hold on, why have you made me think I need to do this when mm -hmm. you've told me to do mm -hmm. this, you know? Jacob's back at his bakery having illusions about his almost lover, who remember, really wanted to be with him. So she left him to be with him. That's when he meets Lolly, who didn't think the first two movies were enough, that she has to test his bravery yet again, and then proceeds to give him an enemy on the previous movies. I really liked her style though. Like, literally, she's able to fix styles. She can fix his outfit, just not his relationship. But she also has some of the best wand fights. You actually see her using the surrounding objects in order to outwit other people, you know, all Jackie Chan style. And she even has this neat little travel book that she uses literally. But I will say, I respect the influence on the accent, but. Man, that caught me off guard considering the previous cameo. Yeah, book can take you around the world and back. All you have to do is open it. Then you gotta go. What? 
Flamel, you can do this. We believe in you. You know we're still in the first act because Newt and Jacob are barely reuniting, and it's Christmas aboard the Berlin Express. Jacob gets a wand, Bunty gets Tina's lines, Yusuf gets new friends, and Theseus gets ignored. But I'm just questioning how they got a bottle of Don Julio on that train because it ain't 1942. Like... That battle would be called Tomorrow? The movie then keeps flip-flopping between being a heist movie and a political thriller. They end up at a magical convention in Germany where they're trying to hold an election to see who's going to be the new king wizard. And for a studio that's so iffy on getting political, man, they're talking about borders for wizards. They're calling out bigotry, peaceful transfers of power. There's a new character named Anton who declares how everyone deserves to have a voice and shouldn't be silenced even if you disagree with them. All right, Warner Bros. He also decides that all of Grindel's crimes from the last movie yeah, is gone. They end up arresting Theseus instead, which well, personally I didn't mind, but after all of the weird World War II references they were making in the last movie, and a lot of movies like to do and bring it in reality, it's just weird to see them also have a German Ministry of Magic while those things are going on, because if you're going to mention camps, did they just not see what was going on? Anton then convinces the council to let Grindel run because they don't want to deny the public's voice. And Grindel's really got fans out there. People are crowd surfing him. It was hilarious to see the wizards at a convention shooting their wands in the sky like cowboys shooting blanks. As far as the Grindel goons, they're sporting new looks and dripped in dark colors to show their inner souls. Grindel is actually blonde, Ezra's hair is longer than their public tantrums, and the guy who played Abernathy was so dark, uh, the dude's in jail. Kama then appears to them saying he was sent there to spy, but wants to be a double spy, and Grindel just removes the memory of his sister. Now, I don't know how that doesn't like change his inspiration, you know, like the reasoning for why he's doing what he's doing, but we're also talking about a character who they wrote in a way where he's in the sunken place for most of the movie, and then in the end just magically gets out. Kind of like how Queenie can read minds, but in this movie they had her reading the script with the amount of exposition they gave her. Hello, Credence. Dumbledore then meets with Credence and dupes him into his upside down world and just beats him easily, like no harm is done to the city. I'm just wondering. Albus, where were you in the first movie? After his uncle has him on his back, he realizes that they never knew anything about him, and then just gets left behind again in a flash. Like, they couldn't even lolly him up, like, he's just disheveled on the street, and they do that for a lot of characters. Tina's not in this one because she's working, like, forget the fact that the person she likes is involved, that her sister is fighting with the enemy, like, I, I, I think fighting in a war would be bigger than her off getting a promotion. Nagini was also cut because the actress was supposedly pregnant even though the other actors in the movie were also pregnant, so I don't know if she was just uh, slithering too much on her socials, or maybe they finally realized Nagini was Indonesian. But they always find a way, though, to force Minerva into the movie. So unless she's a time traveler, none of- <laughs> Newt visits his brother in jail and does his little crab dance so you know we're in the second act and he's able to break him out. Meanwhile, Lolly and Jacob go to a dinner to protect Santos and prove that the guy who wants to kill Muggles is wrong by then setting up Jacob the Muggle to look like an assassin. The fact that everything didn't go precisely to plan was precisely the plan. I did like how his wand was practically like one of those fake steering wheel things though. They all escape and make it back to Hogwarts. Dumble gives his backstory about his sister Ariana and how she was poisoned by an Obscurus because of all the family problems they had. And that's what led to more tensions between the Dumble bros and their feuding, drawing their wands eventually, and accidentally killing Ariana. And he recaps all this while she's chilling as a gift portrait in the back. An obscurus grows in the absence of love as a dark twin. We also quickly learned that uh, Credence is their nephew and they just didn't know. Anyways, this fantastic creature known as a chillin' ends up becoming the main character since it can look into your soul and it will bow down to the most purest person, which is what they're going to be using to determine the election. I wouldn't be surprised though if Dumbledore wasn't the one who gave Grindel that idea back when they were together, when they were really young, because like, why be the president yourself when you can be controlling all the young minds at a school that raises all these kids with talent, some that even include those who are great with animals. But because the chillin' ended up being twins, he decides to pull a too brief 2K in order to sneak in the living chillin into the place where they're voting so that they can then prove that Grindel's fake chillin is a part of his election fraud? Our best hope is to confuse him. Uh. It's working on me right now. After Scooby doing a round, they snatch the case from Nude, who then has a rocky start getting up the stairs, as the fake Bambi elects Grindel. And on inauguration day, the dude attempts murder? It is legit day zero in office, and man declares a world's war, all while being Wonkast live. Our war with the Muggles begins today! Dumble then pulls a reverse Riddler by having Bunty be the one who pulls up with a real case, because 
Yeah, I guess she's a nobody to them, but after everyone was just cheering Grindel, everyone just gets up and calls him a liar. Like his Grindel goons have just vanished. A bird comes in and poops on, drops a grain of ash on him, and then they restart this Groundhog Day ceremony, and the new real chillin' chooses Dumbledore? How convenient is that? Wow. So after three recounts, and against what the majority ones have voted for, the electoral Bambi Cas Santos is the new leader. They have their big fight, which isn't even supposed to happen till 1945. So you know it's one of those pseudo fights that happens inside Dumbledore's head again. You know for the trailer shot, and it's just a cop out. You know it, it's really goofy. Imagine two people fighting in front of you and having this dramatic conversation. And it's like on their phones. I I'm assuming that's what it looked like for everyone there. They finally cross wands as the Dumble Bros protect their son and nephew. And that act of protecting versus killing is enough to break their love pack necklace and give us two more movies as Grindel gets away. If by tea time, all of us are still alive, you should consider our efforts a success. It's clear as water that Credence will have a revival considering he was, you know, Aberfur's dirty little secret and that's how he became an American reject, but, you know, now he gets to move along. I just know, though, that Albus is still hiding some secrets. No. The leaky cauldron. <laughs> in the end, Jacob and Queenie finally get married and hosted at the bakery with probably one in the oven, but Dumbledore, who helped them get reunited, just doesn't get invited? Or worse, he shows up, he just doesn't go in. Instead, in true Albus fashion, he gets the best man, who's still writing a speech, to walk across an icy road just so he can say, what's up? As Tina finally shows up in her cameo, and Newt stares at her salamander eyes once more after saving the day. But all I know is, DC is better steer clear. Thank you all for checking out this video. I'm curious to know your thoughts down below in the comment section. Again, a big shout out to Bright Seller. You could do an Expecto Patron, but it's better just go take that quiz. You know, get wines that are all specific to your specific taste. Uh, I'm very curious to see where they're going to take this. If they take it, you know, will Bunty end up getting a raise? With them multiplying pastries like they showed here, does that mean they've solved world hunger? Will Ezra be out in time to be able to film the next movie? You ask a lot of questions that can get you killed. I'm curious to know what else we're gonna do with this. Uh, I know that it's been a messy ride, but uh, let me know your theories down below. I know that this is still, four and five are still brand new stories that no one has seen yet. And supposedly all of the contradictions and everything are supposed to be answered because she's had a plan from the beginning, but we'll see. Uh, there's a lot of good writing in the movie. There's good, you know, actors. It's just something about it hasn't completely clicked like the original series has, but we'll see what they end up doing with it, if they end up doing anything with it. But uh, I'm curious to know your theories, your thoughts, your favorite characters, favorite moments, your favorite ones out of the three that have been out so far. Until next time, don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, and the Slytherin boys will send you a snack. <laughs>